Good evening, family. Ken Mills here with World Views on Boss Up Houston Network. Now, tonight, I have a special episode for you. Normally, the platform will bring on multiple guests, but tonight we have one phenomenal guest. And you guessed it, tonight is the showbiz episode. We're going to cover every facet of show business from a particular view. Now, this is a, a topic that is that is very near and dear to my heart because I'm in the midst of it. So I'll learn, and also as you tune in, you may learn some things too. Uh, what we're going to do at this time, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. But stay tuned. Stay tuned for our illustrious guests that will come back after the commercial break. Like we said before, you're here with Ken Mills with World Views. Boss up, you should, you know why? <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, before we get started here, I'm going to introduce this gentleman here to my left. Now, this gentleman here is a multifaceted entertainer and also an entrepreneur. I mean, this, this man has written films, directed, uh, he goes on tour with comedy, and also there's another tidbit that we'll cover later on down the line. But this illustrious gentleman that I have sitting next to me is none other than Maul Malucci. How are you today, What's Ma? going on, man? He said illustrious. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he close to me. <laughs> close. That's right. That's right. <laughs> What's going on, man? It's all good, Maul. Such That's a pleasure up, to have you here with us. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank y'all for having me. All right. Appreciate it. Now, now Maul, uh, what I'd like to cover here, like... I can tell by your accent you're not an original Houston native. Where, where nah. did you reside? Where did you originate from? I'm originally from New Orleans, man. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, Seven Wall. Seven Wall, man. Off Religion Field. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Now, uh, I got family that way. It's like a second home for me out there in New Orleans. Now, um, if I'm correct, it used to be a po' boy spot uh, on the on the Legion Fields called Geno's. Jeans. Jeans, yeah. Jeans po' boy, yeah. They just shut Jeans down, man. I'm uh -huh. mad about that, man. Jeans lost all their money, man. Man. Shoot, yeah. That was a, that's a famous spot, man. The Simpsons. Everybody, man. They They... That was a that's a landmark. Oh, yeah, man. just set jeans down. But that's further down from where I grew up at. I grew up close to the lakefront area. Okay. Um, a little bit further down. That's uh, where jeans at is closer to um, like Saint Claude. 
Right. Like closer to the French quarters. Right. So yeah. Right. Um, and also shout out to my family, Shonda, Shonda and uh, Cecily, that stay out in Gentilly. Our family uh, show y'all love. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit more about the upbringing out there. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> And I came up, man, in the seven wall, you know. Um, my mom, with, with my mom, it's three of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad, <laughs> got multiple. He he has a facet of kids. <laughs> a facet. Uh, yeah. You know, um, growing up, it was pretty, for us, it was pretty, you know, we grew up pretty hard, man. Um, I had to... I had to grow up quick, you know, so, uh, you know, watching siblings and, and seeing certain violence and drugs and um, I was exposed to stuff early. So uh, I had to, I had to move quick, man. I had to, I had to learn things fast and, you know, being in New Orleans, you know, around that time when I was coming up, it was, it was a lot of violence going on, a lot of killings and things like that. So. Uh, we had the toe down early, so yeah, was, I, I learned. I learned quick. You know what I'm saying. My brothers um, made sure that uh, I learned. My cousins, they all made sure that you know I learned how to handle my handle myself in the streets accordingly. Hmm. You know, so yeah. So w- with that being said. Um, and, and as we mentioned before, that I mean, you you a dynamic comedian. I take it that comedy had to come in to play some type of way in that environment. Um, I was always the goofy one. I was always the clown, the class clown. I used to get in trouble. I got kept back in the third grade because <laughs> uh, I, I just I was always the kid who cut up, man. I was the worst one. I was the one who got in trouble for doing stupid stuff, man. And um. You know, I always knew I wanted to do comedy. I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. That was my dream. Hmm. Um, if I didn't make it in football. And um, the dream was to be on Saturday Night Live after I seen Eddie Murphy and uh, Phil Hoffman and, and those cats. Uh, they were just hilarious to me. Um, the Mad TV and the Living Color. You know, watching Jamie Foxx and, and Keenan Ivory Wayans. Those, those uh, people. Um, but I, I mean, comedy has always been there for me. It's, it's always been in the, in the fold for me, you know. Cause, uh, you know, I, I had similar upbringing and also similar influences. But I tell you, uh, my favorite comedian when I was coming up uh, was either out of Eddie Murphy or Robin Harris. Yeah, that's that's two good ones. Yeah, I'm talking about like uh, I had to sneak and watch Delirious. I had to sneak and watch Raw. <laughs> then it got to a point where my mom was just like, just going to watch it. Yeah. watch it. I was a Red Fox guy. Because my voice is raspy. Yeah. So it sounds like I'm a smoker. And I don't even smoke. <laughs> I, sound like a, I sound like a 70-year-old smoker. <laughs> and I took the Red. Like, I like I always liked Sanford and Son. And um, then Jamie, actually, Jamie Foxx became one of my favorite comedians uh, as I got older. Shockingly, after I seen uh, "Think I Need Security," okay, okay. After I seen that, I was like, "Man, Jamie is it, man. Jamie is it." Um, so and Martin, Martin Lawrence. I used to watch Def Comedy Jam, man. I used to, oh man, my mama had so many the HBO bill. That HBO bill was high, but I used to sneak and pay the uh, hit the button, hit the pay button on that, just to get. <laughs> so look, now. I'm I'm gonna tell y'all this story. Now, Quita, don't get on the live. Now, I got a sister named Quita. Don't get on the live and talk about that's right. But this what happened. I was in the first grade. I was elevated for my age, so in first grade I was five years old. So I would go into her room, and she used to have this cable box, and you would be able to slide it to the to the yeah. channel that you wanted, right? So they used to tell me, Kenny, don't go past twenty. I went past 20. So the first time I got kicked out of school, I told my teacher that she was an expletive that was uh, a lesbian. It started with a B and a D. And uh, after that, they turned the cable off. So 
I feel where you're coming from. That time, I'm telling you, that time comedy was very dynamic. But I also heard you say that, that you had an affinity for football. So what, what position did you play? I played cornerback. Cornerback? Cornerback, man. Cornerback and safety. I was a defensive guy, man. I ain't like to get hit. But I used to, man, I would hit. The, I'll leave you out. But I ain't like to get hit. Hmm. So I was, you know, my, my mom actually got me in football uh, to kind of kill my aggression. Because as I got older, I fought a lot. Like, I was always angry. I was that kid. I was goofy, but I always fought. Like, I was always in a fight with somebody. Right. And, um, you know, I stayed in trouble. I was always getting suspended. So, to kill that aggression, she got me in football and uh, and baseball. And <clears throat> if she's watching this, well, she didn't really get me in football. Let me tell you what happened. Yeah. Uh, there's a park called East Show Park. And my cousins, um, they were... All in East Show. They all played football. It was all good. And I said, you know what? I'm going to play football. And I snuck on the football team without her knowing that I was on the football team. And when she found out I was on the football team, how she found out was because I didn't get no more fights. My aggression was down. So she was like, you know what? I'll go ahead on and let him continue to play if he don't get no more fights. Hmm. <laughs> so that's how I really got into football. But she kept me in it. You know, because, and I was, I was, I was so dumb. I was. <laughs> hey, so I'm going to ask you an OG question on football. So when you were playing cornerback, who did you choose? Daryl Green or Deion Sanders? Daryl Green. Huh. I used to like Daryl because Daryl Green was fast, like lightning fast. I seen Daryl Green gun a running back down. Dude was on this side of the field. Daryl Green was on this side. Daryl Green came all the way down and gunned him down mm -hmm. by the end zone. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was the most awesome thing I ever seen. Dion was Dion was Dion. That was prime time. Right. But Daryl Green was just he was that man. So I tell you this story. I only lasted in football probably about three weeks. Uh, my dad and them, they always said, because of my size, they want me to play football. So when I was in middle school, they said, okay, go out for the team. So I went out for the team, but I never got no playing time. <laughs> so uh, what ended up happening, I got into a fight. This was at the beginning of eighth grade year. I got into a fight with one of my good partners, Oscar. If you see it in this here, just ride with it. So uh, they suspended me for three days. My mama had to come get me. She said, look here, you ain't gonna do nothing at this house. You finna cut some grass. So I was out there cutting grass and all that there and I finagled my way back on the football field. My daddy was out there, he watching me. They made us run laps, eight laps in Houston heat in the middle of September with the helmet on, no water. That was that life though, man, I missed that. I had for the water. Coach say, no. I was about to pass out. I told my dad, I said, look, I don't know if I'm able to make it. He said, son, go in there in that air conditioning with them women. <laughs> and go be a player. And that's what I did. I miss that football game. <laughs> yeah. I miss it. I really do. Yeah. But uh, everybody, you know, we, we'll come back with a little bit more after this next small commercial break. But you're now here kicking it with World Views with Ken Mills. Mom Malucci, Boss Up Houston Network. We'll be right back with you. Come get your questions answered. We'll see you then. And remember, lawyer up.
right, we're back with you. Uh, back here with Mom Malucci. So, all right, Mom. So we we've already went through the uh, upbringing. Now, can you kind of tell us how you started your comedic journey? Uh, my cousin, man, my cousin Ryan, man. Shout out to Ryan. Um, I called him up one day. I, I was watching Steve Harvey do some comedy, and I called him up. I said, Ryan, I want to do comedy. And my cousin was like. I said, yeah, I want to do comedy. He said, bro, it's different than just being out here, you know, cutting up. I said, man, I want to do it. And um, he sent me to a guy named Red Bean hmm. in New Orleans. Red Bean runs a spot. It's the one of the longest running comedy spots in New Orleans. Um, it's in, um, it's downtown or whatever. And I went to Red Bean. I said, hey, look, I'm a new comic. I want to get on. Red Bean sent, put me on stage at 3 o'clock in the morning. I rocked it. I actually did good. I went the next the next week and bombed. And Ray Bean was like, yeah, you bombed. Just keep coming back. And I kept going back. And from there, I linked up with Mark Caesar. Uh, Mark Caesar had a group called Pitch Your Pants Comedy. Mm -hmm. And I uh, linked up with Mark. Mark took me under his wing and uh, started rocking with Mark. Started rocking with Pitch Your Pants Comedy. Did a couple skits with them. Um, Mario P., uh, started doing shows around the, around the city, and uh, he put me on from there. Okay. And um, from there, I end up, you know, branching off and, and moving here. Okay. And um, when I moved here, that's when everything really started to take off for me. Because um, I ended up getting with Jody Summers. We did some stuff. And then um, I started getting calls for doing uh, shows on the road you know, um, touring and stuff like that. So uh, I end up going and do that. Like Eddie Griffin had um, had something in Vegas. He, had, he was doing a residency in Vegas. And uh, his people reached out to me. And uh, I went out there and um, I worked with him in Vegas uh, while he was doing his residency. So um, from there, it's just been... <laughs> Joe Tory, Guy Tory, <laughs> been rolling after that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So, what was one of the defining moment, moments on the journey where you felt that you saw that you were getting traction? Uh, I would probably say working with Mario P. Mario, my man. Mario... Mario, like, I didn't get, like, how comedians are now, I didn't get that love. Mm -hmm. Like, they really, like, showed me, like, I had to pay dues. Like, it was some dudes. Like, Mario used to put me on shows, man, and I had three minutes. Mm -hmm. That was it. He would give you three minutes, one second, it was three minutes. And I I knew I was doing something when Mario said, all right, Mo, we're going to get ten minutes. I was like, oh, wait, what? And that was the last show he did. The last, the very last show he did, um, he said, Mama, give you 10 minutes, dog. You get to go up there and do 10. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, getting, I'm about to roll now. You know what I'm saying? But those first seven shows that he did, he would call me. I didn't get on every show that he did, but the seven that I did with Mario, six of them was three minutes, bro. Like, he was not, like, he was like, yo, Mama. And I'm going up before he even get introduced. Hmm. Like, before he, and he hosted. So before he... Before he even came on stage, I was opening that. And I had to open up, and then after my three minutes, I had to introduce him and bring him up. So, so. basically, do you feel that that situation taught you a level of humility? It taught me a lot. It taught me, it taught me a great deal of humility. Because, you know, now it's like, you know, cats coming in now, they want to be headliners, like, as soon as they get on, they like, they get a couple laughs, and they're like, oh, I want to be the headliner. You know, with that, like, it was like, nah, man, you ain't ready. You know, like, even with, with Shaq Brown, uh, Blowfish, Law Rest Blowfish, so, man, he just passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Shotty Feel Good. Those guys, they, they really, like, made me work. Like, they made me, like, they didn't care how funny I was. Right. Like, it wasn't even about being funny. It's, you're going to pay these dudes, bro. You gotta work. You gotta work up your way to getting on the headline. You gotta work your way up to being a feature. Hey, you gotta work your way up to be an opener. You're not even considered an opener. You know what I'm saying? So it it 
it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot. And I watched the comedians today, and I'm like, bro, y'all. <laughs> that's why they don't have that that same, you know, humility, you know. Right. So, <clears throat> with, with those uh, different opportunities, with, with those uh, famous comedians that you've worked with, um, has has there been any defining interaction with them? Like, um, did they ever come back and give you any words of wisdom? I mean, of course. Um, I mean, every time J.J. Uh, Williamson uh, comes down, uh, he always, man, he always give you that, you know, he going to spit that game to you. You know what I'm saying? J.J. Um, Steve Brown is another guy, man. Steve, whenever you hit Steve up, man, Steve going to always encourage you. You know, he's always encouraging. He's always, like, you know, telling you keep pushing it, whatever, you know. Um, so I mean, I I get I get a couple of guys that I talk to periodically. I don't really be wanting to bother them like that. I'm not one that, you know, be hitting them dudes up like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they doing their own little thing. But, you know, uh, like if I see them, you know, I'll talk to them, and they always encourage them. You know. So at this point, even through now, the turbulent time that we're going through. Um, <clears throat> What aspirations do you have as far as furthering your, your your brand in comedy? Um, I mean, I'm comedy is like to me. I mean, I look at it as a business. It's just one of my businesses. It's just one of the things that I, I'm uh, I'm into. You know, um, I mean, if it pop, it pop. Like I'm not, you know, like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, this is this is the end all be all for me. You know. I'm. I tell you, I'm taking comedy, and I want to do other things. I'm just took. I just took comedy to, to to just be that that stepping stone. You know what I'm saying? To learn other things and to you know do other things. You know what I'm saying? So, if you don't mind me asking, uh, what are those other avenues that, that you're working on now? Uh, we about to do season two, and we want all the smoke. Okay. We just finished up season one. Um, season one was a success. Um, man, everybody. You know, like the pandemic actually, we were supposed to start in April, then the pandemic hit, so we had to put it on hold for a while, um, but we're starting back up uh, next month. We'll be back on the road with that. Um, season two going to be even better, man. It's, it's, it's about to get a little bit intense on there. Um, I'm working on some things for the kids. Got my son. My son uh, wants to act. Hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm writing some some little children uh, movies, so I'm in the process of doing that. Um, with just kids, it ain't gonna be no adults. It's gonna be all kids, you know. Um, I got that going on, man. Uh, I'm doing music videos. I'm directing music videos. I I directed a uh, a couple videos. Um, I got uh, Kia, um, little Kia. She uh, I directed her. Her video, I even did a couple of songs with some cash. You know what I'm saying? I done dipped on the music, on the music okay. scene. Yeah, okay. man, I'm trying to be a rapper too. Okay. I'm trying to be a rapper, man. Under the somebody. same name, or you yeah, gonna go under the same like Kill 'Em All or uh -uh, something? No, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to be like a little baby, man. I'm trying to get my little baby on. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I done jumped on a couple of little. Little music, uh, little music, little songs and stuff like that. I ain't really rapping on that, but um, yeah, I got that going on. Um, shout out to Kate Parker. I just directed his uh, one of his videos, um, and uh, getting some great reviews for that. He's an R and B singer, so um, yeah, that's getting that's nice too. So, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to circle back to the uh, We Want Smoke. Because look, I was I started watching it. Mm -hmm. My wife came in and said, "What the heck are you watching?" But I was glued to the screen. I mean, the the entire. She must have caught you on one of them sex scenes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look, and she caught me on Big Baby crying on there. Big Baby oh, was crying. Oh, Big Baby crying. Yeah, 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 my brother. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one thing that I noticed with the We Won't Smoke uh, series is that. You have a lot of uh, locally known comedians uh, in it, yeah. as well as artists. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to understand, you know, what was your perspective when you began to write 
uh, this series and bring it to you, to to actual reality. Well, what happened was it's it's actually based off of a song that uh, two of the stars and uh, they also are the producers. They are also executive producers as well mm-hmm. of the show. Um, it's based off of their song. Mm-hmm. Um, I just took their song and just made it, you know, reality. Um, as far as getting people to be in it, I. You know, by me not being from here, I wanted to show love to Houston. Like, Houston embraced me. You know, when I moved here, everybody showed me love. You know what I'm saying? It's always been something, you know, that, that they they embraced, they embraced a dude from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? So, right. to give back to them, I just, I wanted to uh, incorporate Houston, you know. Um, as far as the comedians, man, that's all my guys, man. So I got to put Houston comedians in there because I got to have, you know, got to give them some love too, you know. Um, it's a lot of music, it's a lot of artists, music artists is in there. Um, not that many actors. Right. You know, the thing is with this with this uh, this series, nobody in this series has ever acted, has ever done any acting before. You could have fooled me. Yeah. You could have fooled me because when I looked at it, uh, see myself, I have an affinity to look at uh, the more urban films like Money and Violence, The Wire, things like that, I'm glued into it. Right. So when I saw it, it fell along in that same vein, and I was just glued to it again. Uh, so what would be the variation in, in the second season? Um, well, of course, Jacob was, Jacob was killed. Right. So um, it's, it's some twists to this. Uh mm-hmm. I'm all still out there doing what he doing. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Running out of people's houses, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cheeks, uh, James Cheeks, comedian yeah. as well. Uh, he playing the officer on there. Um, he uh, is is gunning for Maul. Maul is, you know, sleeping with his wife. Um, so that's still going on. Uh, we added Patrick. Uh, Patrick Edia. I, I, I want to... Eddie or Edie, I want to say his name right. He's uh the chief of police now. Okay. So we added him in there. Big Baby Green still there. Um, we're gonna have more, um, more additions, you know, to the to the series because it's it's about to get real, man. It's about to get real. I can tell. Shout out to JT Too Funny. That's uh the the comedian that plays yeah. uh, uh James Cheeks. Yeah. And and the funny thing about it, when I saw it, it's so far away from his demeanor that I, that it was believable. Bro, like <laughs> when the part when he was aggressive. Yes. That that's not even him. Like he was like, hey, I gotta really do this. As big as he is, <laughs> right. man, he's like, I gotta really do this. I'm like, yeah, bro, you gotta. Well, I don't want to hit you too hard, man. Hit me. <laughs> I'm like, hit me, man. He's like, okay. And like he tackled me, and it was like he didn't want to hit me too hard, right? Because he's he's not that dude. He's not that kind of dude, you know. Yeah, and we'd be remiss not to mention that uh, Maul actually plays in it. He plays an integral character, yeah. and I mean this guy is hilarious. I'm talking yeah. about hilarious. Um, his interactions with the entire crew is hilarious. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and take a look on YouTube for the We Won't Smoke series and catch up on it. Because when it comes back out on that ep- uh, the season two, yep. it's going to be like power. Once you get into it, it's kind of like power. It's going to be episode one of season two is about to change the game. Trust okay. me. Okay, okay. I didn't, I didn't, it took me three months to write this. Hmm. So it's about to be something. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Have to be real. So, I, I also heard you mention a little bit earlier where you started to speak about doing children's uh, programs. So, you also do a voiceover on uh, the Ben 10. Yeah, I'm also the, vo- uh, the voice of Manny Armstrong on Ben 10. Uh huh. So, um, yeah, I, I actually just got that role this year hmm. in January. Um, we were working on a movie for Ben 10. Ben 10 is. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, ask your kids who Ben 10 is. Trust me, they know who Ben 10 is. Um, but we were doing a movie. We were shooting a movie for uh, Ben 10. Um, and it got postponed because of the pandemic. 
Mm -hmm. um, everything is pretty much done, but uh, I guess the editing and stuff like that is is what's on hold with uh, com with uh, Cartoon Network. And um, I'm gonna also be in the next season because they actually stopped Ben Ten, but they're gonna bring Ben Ten back. So I'll be the voice of Manny Armstrong as well. Okay. On there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Yeah. That's now. What's up. Look here, uh, we're going to go to a brief commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to have more from this phenomenal gentleman here. And also, we're going to have an announcement most people don't know about, but just stay tuned with us. Uh, Worldviews here with Ken Mills on Boss of Houston Network. Devin, did you know GEICO is now offering an extra 15% credit on car and motorcycle policies? Okay. That's 15% on top of what GEICO could already save you. So what are you waiting for? DJ Khaled to be your motivational coach? <laughs> Yo, Devin, remember the brush in a circle motion. Thank you, DJ Khaled. Tiny circles, Devin. Do another one. Another one. Is this good? Put in that word, Devin. Don't give up. Geico. Save an extra 15% when you switch by October 7th. Don't play yourself. Hit subscribe to play more great Geico videos. And don't forget to share. Breakfast at Auntie D's. Take one. That's all it's going to take. Rigga daddy's on yeah. the beat Wine, dime, kill the time Heard it through the grapevine The type of dude that like to get dime in the time Wine, dime, yeah. kill the time uh -huh. Heard it through Ay. the grapevine Ay. The dude that type Ay. of dude that like to get dime in the time Wine, dime, kill the time Heard it through the grapevine The dude that type of dude that like to get dime in the time Don't yeah. please sip her More wet Patron sipper Do you the type of girl that like to pull down the zipper I like that shoe. It's too fake, appetizing. After this, I'm digging your thighs. Real devil's eyes. Look in your eyes. You gotta squirt before you go. Go sit down, baby. Go sit down. And I'm impressed with your waist. But keep shaping your thighs. Compliment you on your booty and your hair and your booty. Okay. Hey. Here you go, baby. Why dine? Kill the time. Heard it through the grapevine. And you the type of dude that like to get down in the time. Comfort zone with you. Cut. Now, Ma, uh, well, before we left, we talked about the Ben 10 uh, series that you just signed back on to. Uh, has there been any obstacles as you've been going through this journey and also inclusion into film? Um, doing right now, I think it's just a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I don't have any, like I, I try not to look at things as an obstacle. Okay. You know, um, if it's something that's in my way, man, I, I try to, I, I'll go around it. You know, nothing gonna stop me from getting through that door. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Something in the, in the, something in the way of that door, man. It gotta move. You know, so that's just, that's just how I've always been. Man. You know? That's right. And you know, uh, from what I can notice from the outside looking in, you have to have a high level of organization to carry all these different hats that you have. Yeah. Um, like, kind of take us through your day, like when you start up, <laughs> and how you touch these different things. Man, uh, my days be hectic, man, cause I, I don't get sleep. Like I don't, I, I really don't sleep. Like you look at my eyes now, my eyes, I don't sleep. Bro. Like I, I'll be yawning and them like you tired. I'm like nah, cause I'm, you know, I'm always doing something. Right. I'm always trying to do something. I'll come home from doing work and get right back into work, you know. Um, I'll, I'll do my scripts, I'll write my scripts down. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm, I'm a pretty organized guy. Like I write them first before I even start typing. So uh, I do that, I do phone calls. I'll be on the phone doing a conference call and do it. Now. <laughs> 
Me personally, my wife will tell you this. I wake up at 5 in the morning every morning and my phone in my hand. Either I'm going through emails, either I'm going out on the patio, going out to the pool, sitting down, making calls. That's me, man. Uh, either I'm balancing the checkbook, either I'm going back in on the computer, uh, either I'm calling the network here, I'm calling my affiliate business partners. But I understand because in order for you to have the progression, you have to work toward it. Because... So, I'm not even going to take too long with this, and I just want to say this. For a lot of people, when they say that they are in business, some sometimes people do it to say that they're doing it for show, not right. really doing it for the the, the real reason why. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I take it that you're one of those individuals as well. I, I get up at 4.30. Well, I got up at 4.30 this morning. Mm -hmm. Um took my dog out and while my dog was out I was doing work. Eight at seven, seven thirty, seven o'clock, seven thirty. I was on a conference call. Mm -hmm. Already. Um I had my laptop in my hand, writing, doing a conference call, watching the dog run around. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I'm done with that, went back inside, did what I had to do inside, left, went to work, came home, worked some more came here like that's just my life like you know during the week it's all work so if you don't mind i'd like to put this out here so also you are uh, a new football team owner correct yes yes all right a7 fl now <laughs> Check this out. So I did a little research because you know me, I'm nosy. That's the reason why it's world views because I want to see the world, right? So I look it up. Now, something very different about this league, they don't use any safety equipment? None. This is the UFC of football, man. Wow. Yeah. They, no equipment, just jersey, shorts, cliques, football. Let's get it. Okay, okay. Now, I see this uh, league is primarily on the east. Uh, on the east coast, yeah. You okay. have a few. Now, there's a few on uh, down south. There's just, it's not many, though. It's not many. But, yeah. And they're bringing one to Dallas. Mm. Yeah, Dallas is getting one. I tried to bring it to Houston, y'all. I'm sorry. Didn't happen. I'm in South Carolina. The South Carolina Sharks. Next year be starting up so yeah okay so next year what what uh what quarter uh we're well the first tournament is in march okay they won't i won't be in that one because i won't be in any tournaments because of when i got the team mm -hmm. so i won't start until july uh, my team won't start until july um i'll have a coach now soon um I got three candidates. One of them is actually an NFL player. Really? Yeah. So you can't leak that one, can you? I just say this. It's bad moon, baby. <laughs> but, hey. All right. I'll keep that on the tuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Left yeah. hand, right hand. Yeah. So, all right. So, how did you get into this uh, opportunity uh, to own the team? Uh, a friend of mine um, told me about it. I always want to, like, my whole thing is, man, I like ownership. I don't like, I don't like to, like, everything I have, I, I want to own it. I don't want to finance nothing. I don't want to have to pay on anything. I want to own things. So I've always wanted to own a football team, basketball team, you know, baseball team. I ain't care if it was minor league, whatever. So uh, a friend of mine, he was like, yo, they got a little league started up, man. It's called the A7FL. They ain't wearing no equipment, man. They hitting, bro. And I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, they out there in Florida. And uh, he sent me a video. Mm -hmm. And um, I watched it. And I did research on it. Um, and I talked to the CEO of the, of the league. And, um, you, know, I, you know, I went through all the little steps. And he was like, do you want a team? I'm like, yeah. I'm 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 interested in, in the team, you know. And um 
he gave me the numbers. And I was like, all right, you know, let's do it. Can I bring it to Houston? He was like, no. Houston is not on the on the list right now, you know. So um, I ended up having to go to South Carolina. But interesting, I, I went to Charleston. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I went to Charleston because that was the first uh, the first place where the slaves were brought. So um, I wanted to, you know, bring bring that to Charleston, South Carolina, and not only that, I am. Uh, I am definitely a minority in the league. Right. <laughs> the only minority in the league. So, yeah. So I take it that that you're gonna put your own spin on your team, and you're gonna do things. Oh yeah, in definitely, that way. Yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I'm gonna definitely have my own little twist to it, and you know, put a little flavor in there. Mm -hmm. So, halftime show. Yeah. Boop. I. Mike, that's a good <laughs> idea. Look, that's a good idea. Have a marching band coming up. Yeah. I have time, so yeah. It's a good idea. Because, you know, as I, you know, we, was taking a look at the league, I love football myself. Um, there was one player that I saw that I think might be a little competition for you, but if you could put one of them Jerry Jones moves and get him, I think I think that would be the bomb. If you get uh, – D'Angelo Lewis, they call him uh, Snag. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He, he a monster. Yeah. They got another cat out of uh, New York, man. Um, out of Harlem. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he's Italian. Play wide receiver. Well, he might be going to jail. That's that's mm. you know, some other stuff. He has some legal issues going on, but it's cold, man. It's he is phenomenal, phenomenal, man. So, yeah. Because, I, I, I mean, the, the, the funniest part is that, you know, like you alluded to at the beginning of the interview, uh, that you had an affinity for it, and now it just came to fruition. So, yeah. basically, everything that you wanted in your earlier life, yeah. you attained. Yeah, you just got to attack it. Okay. You know, if you want it, you bring it to fruition. You don't, I, I don't believe in saying... You know, I want. No, you go get it. If there's something that you want, you don't want it, you get it. You know, um, I don't know how long we got, but I'll tell you a story about Les Alexander. Go ahead. I was uh, doing pest control, and I went to Les Alexander's house, and Les Alexander uh, went to his closet. And he had seven suits in his closet. And Les Alexander, I said, Mr. Alexander, I don't mean to be in your business. I said, but why you got seven suits, you Millionaire. He said, son, <laughs> I'm not going to wear all seven suits. I said, oh, okay. He said, there's things that I want and there's things that I need. He said, if you want it, do you really want it or do you need it? Hmm. I needed these things. So I went out and got it. I didn't want it, you know. Right. Just that simple. Take this jewel here that he just dropped on us. Now look here, we're gonna go to our final commercial break, but when we come back, we'll have a little bit more here with Mom Malucci. Uh, you're tuning in now with World Views with Ken Mills on Boss Up Houston Network. Wanna be a boss? You're watching Boss Up Houston Network. It's Boss Up Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. I want to give you the opportunity to tell your truth. So let's start with what happened. 
This is Red Table Talk. Red Table Talk. Red Table Talk. This table carries no judgment. I suffered trauma at an early age. This table brings out your truth. I had to hit rock bottom. I had to lose everything. This table encourages you to share your story. I was just caught up in that pain. This table has room for everyone. For everyone. Red table makes you emotional. When there's a lot of love there, there's always a path towards healing. Intimate, provocative, unfiltered. Join us. Take a seat at the table. Only on Facebook Watch. We'll pick up on the discussion about the ownership, the football team ownership. So, like right now, I, I know you're in Houston, you're stationed in Houston now, but how do you envision that your, your, your journey is going to be going back and forth from uh, South Carolina? It's, it's not going to be bad. I mean, I'm going to fly out there. And, you know, a lot of owners don't live, you know, where the team is at. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I rack up some miles. So, but... Uh, yeah, I'll fly out there when the season starts and probably stay out there for a little while. Um, give me a little place out there and just hang out for a little while, watch my team and stuff like that. Once the season get kicked off, um, before well, before the season get kicked off, I'm going to be out there more often than, than not because I'm going to have to get everything to situate with the team. So um, I'll be out there and then I'll come home. Houston going to be my home regardless. I ain't, like, I ain't leaving Houston. <laughs> I can't leave him, man. What is it about age time? <laughs> no tax. <laughs> <laughs> no state tax, baby. Uh -huh. shit. I mean, but I love Houston, man. I love Houston, man. I love the people, man. The way I was, the way I was embraced here, you know. After leaving New Orleans, I don't think I could get that anywhere else, man. I done been to California. I done been to New York. You know, I just, I didn't. You know, stayed in Florida for a little while. I stayed in Atlanta for a little while. We talked about oh, that. Yeah. You know, ain't nothing. It, it was. It was never. You know, what I'm saying, embrace being embraced like here, man. You, it's different. You know, what I'm saying it was different for me. So, uh, I'm never leaving here. Never. I don't care. I'll, I'll buy a house somewhere else and vacate there. But this is gonna be my primary. Um, my primary home. So. Same here. Uh, I'm a native Houstonian. I travel a lot, but I tell you, um, I know I get a lot of uh, pressure to to leave. I won't because it's inbred in me. It's inbred in my DNA. Right. Like Houston, to me, I can ride one street and go all the way across town. I can ride South Main from Sugar Land and go all the way to Studiewood. I can ride Wilcrest from Katy and go all the way over to Mo City if yeah. I wanted to. And I ain't got time to learn another city. Right. Houston's so big, bro, I had to get lost. Like, when I moved here, I asked the people, I'm like, yo, like, how I get around? And the lady said, oh, well, I just drive at night. I'm like, drive at night? She was like, yeah, you just get lost. When you get lost and you find your way back, mm -hmm. you'll be all right. Man, I was all the way in Paraland. Man, I was... <laughs> By Highway 6 in Pearland, I'm like, Jesus, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go at. Like, I turned around. I'm like, Lord, please just guide me back home. Man, I stay in the Woodlands. Right. Man, that was hell. <laughs> I know. I was trying to get back. Nah, no, man, I ain't about to learn. I don't need to learn another city. Mm -mm. I done learned this one. This is the fifth largest city in the United States. I'm good. I'm good. Because, <laughs> uh... And, and and to be honest with you, I think there's a lot of untapped value in Houston. It really um, is. But it just takes a certain eye, a certain view. And that's what our mission statement is here with World Views. We want to showcase uh, certain individuals within our community so we can show you that there's more in store for Houston. Um, so, Ma, uh, I mean, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking Definitely, with you here. Uh, lively discussion. Um, how can the people find you? 
<laughs> you get uh <laughs> funny story. You can find me in the local gas station, because I'm always in the gas station using the restrooms. <laughs> All around Houston. But if I'm not in the gas stations, uh you can go on Facebook at Mall M A L Malucci M A L L U C C I. Okay? Uh don't ask me why the name Malucci is a long story. Um Instagram is the same thing, but an underscore after Mo. Uh Twitter, I don't know my Twitter handle. Um it's my Malucci. I think. I think. Could be wrong. Cause I did Twitter way before, but yeah. Just hit my Malucci. I think it's I think it's under there. I'm not quite sure. All right. So what uh do you have any uh, events upcoming or anything that people need to take a look out for? Uh just tune in in the first season of We Want All the Smoke. Um I mean, I, I got a bunch of stuff coming up, but it's like going to be later on. I don't really have nothing coming up this quite right now um, because I'm so, I'm moving around so much. I really ain't have time to like sit down. I'm going to get back on stage. I, I just did Keisha Hunt Room um, and they want me back over there. So uh, I'll probably be over there in the near future once uh, once I get that hook up. That's my, that's my dog right there, Keisha. That's big sis. Um, I'll be over there. Um, I'll be back on stage um, pretty soon. Everything's just so far out, man. So you, know, you can catch me at too many open mics. And so. you and you know, World of Comedy Five Entertainment will find a way to get you back on stage. Yeah, all they gotta do is hit me up. All all World of Comedy Five gotta do is hit me up, and then it's done. It's done. That's it. That's it. It's, yo, we need you such and such time. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I think in December, I'm going to be doing something with Aldi Freeman. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to be doing his room. I think it's December. You see, it's November, December. He hit me up about that, but yeah. Okay. Other than that, it's just the movies and things of that nature. Okay. Well, like I said here before, thank you. Thank I you for coming you, through. Brother. It's a, I appreciate you, brother. I mean, it's a pleasure. It's always a treat when players meet. So uh, <laughs> You can tell you come from an old cat. <laughs> so we about to get into that. That's right. So, uh, you know, we, we had a lively discussion, but there's something I want to touch on a little bit more. Um, we went through the entire journey of uh, Maul's ascension uh, from uh, his upbringing in New Orleans to Houston and beyond now. Uh, also, his uh, journey into ownership, his journey into being a, a creative force uh, in the Houston community and abroad. One thing I'm going to tell you is I'll tell you this. Show business. This man just broke down the whole litany of moves in show business. A lot of people aspire to be something. They aspire to be a singer. They aspire to be a rapper. Some may aspire to be a comedian or an actor. But what we learned here today is that it takes hard work, organization, faith, and a little bit of blessing. You can't go about things willy-nilly. You can't think that somebody's just going to give you something. Nobody ever going to give you anything. And also don't think that, look, just because I'm good as a comedian that I'm going to wrestle my laurels with that. Because guess what? If you don't diversify, if you don't have different lanes that you can move into... Your money going to dry up and people going to say you washed up. Mm -hmm. My whole primary objective here is to show people that we can diversify. We can find different lanes because we all have different talents. When God was in the blessing business, when he preordained what we had, when we came out of the womb, he said, this person going to be this, this person going to be that. But it's up to you to live life and find out what your true blessing is. I don't call it a gift because it's a blessing no. because it came from the most high. And treat it that way. Don't disrespect it. Also, with show business, the reason why I have so many of my guests, and especially this gentleman here, is because we do the right thing. We come and we approach people with respect, with honor. We treat others as we want to be treated. In order for you to win, you can't move grimy. If you move grimy, that's going to be your exit out of the business because nobody wants bad energy around them. 
We try to keep a positive vibe and treat, try to keep with the progression, keep it going. Uh, like an older person told me, everybody not going to be able to fit in the car. With show business, the people who are the most dedicated going to fit in that car and going to make it to the promised land. With that being said, I'd like for you to open your minds, open your hearts, stay safe. Next week, stay tuned. We had an inspiration episode, and we're going to have some entertainment. I want y'all to stay tuned and watch out for that. But it's Ken Mills here with Worldviews on Boss Up Houston Network. Enjoy the rest of your nights. We love you.